Hello and welcome to today's Daily Bible reading. We are continuing through the book of Hosea, the minor prophet, and also through the other minor prophet, Micah, not the other, but one of the other minor prophets, Micah. Let's pray. Father, as we look into your word now, may your word look into us. And may we see things that will help us to see you clearer. I pray, Father, that as we share together and participate in the reading of your word, that you would do something in our soul that would help us to live more closely with Christ, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Hosea chapter 9. Rejoice not, O Israel, exult not like the peoples, for you have played the whore, forsaking your God. You have loved a prostitute's wages on all threshing floors. Threshing floor and wine vat shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail them. They shall not remain in the land of the Lord, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean food in Assyria. They shall not pour drink offerings of wine to the Lord, and their sacrifices shall not please him. It shall be like mourner's bread to them. All who eat of it shall be defiled, for their bread shall be for their hunger only. It shall not come to the house of the Lord. What will you do on the day of the appointed festival and on the day of the feast of the Lord? For behold, they are going away from destruction. But Egypt shall gather them, Memphis shall bury them, nettles shall possess their precious things of silver, thorns shall be in their tents. The days of punishment have come, the days of recompense have come. Israel shall know it, the prophet is a fool, the man of the spirit is mad because of your great iniquity and great hatred. The prophet is the watchman of Ephraim with my God, yet a fowler's snare is on all his ways, and hatred in the house of his God. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. He will remember their iniquity, he will punish their sins. Like grapes in the wilderness, I found Israel. Like the first fruit on the fig tree, in its first season, I saw your fathers. But they came to Baal pure and consecrated themselves to the thing of shame and became detestable like the thing they loved. Ephraim's glory shall fly away like a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, no conception. Even if they bring up children, I will bereave them till none is left. Woe to them when I depart from them. Ephraim, as I have seen, was like a young palm planted in a meadow. But Ephraim must lead his children out to slaughter. Give them, O Lord, what will you give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. Every evil of theirs is in Gilgal. There I began to hate them because of the wickedness of their deeds. I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. All their princes are rebels. Ephraim is stricken. Their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Even though they give birth, I will put their beloved children to death. My God will reject them, because they have not listened to him. They shall be wanderers among the nations. So clearly you can see here, Hosea is pointing out, and we've already seen by his own marriage, the illustration of his own marriage, just how Israel turned its back on God and went to become unfaithful and spiritually adulterous, going into idolatry. And here we have Hosea just lambasting the so-called prophets of these false gods who claim to speak on behalf of God, yet promoting idolatry. This is Hosea chapter 10. Israel is a luxurious vine that yields its fruit. The more its fruit is increased, the more altars he built. As his country improved, he improved his altars. Their heart is false. Now they must bear their guilt. The Lord will break down their altars and destroy their pillars. For now they will say, We have no king, for we do not fear the Lord. And a king, what could he do for us? They utter mere words. With empty oaths they make covenants. So judgment springs up like poisonous weeds in the furrows of the field. The inhabitants of Samaria tremble for the calf of Beth Arvon. Its people mourn for it, and so do its idolatrous priests, those who rejoiced over it and over its glory for it has departed from them. The thing itself shall be carried to Assyria as tribute to the great king. Ephraim shall be put to shame and Israel shall be ashamed of his idol. Samaria's king shall perish like a twig on the face of the waters. The high places of Arvon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. 
thorn and thistle shall grow up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, Cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. From the days of Gibeah you have sinned, O Israel. There they have continued. Shall not the war against the unjust overtake them in Gibeah? When I please, I will discipline them, and nations shall be gathered against them when they are bound up for their double iniquity. Ephraim is a trained calf that loved to thresh, and I spared her fair neck. But I will put Ephraim to the yoke. Judah must plough. Jacob must harrow for himself. Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap steadfast love. Break up your fallow ground. For it is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. You have ploughed iniquity. You have reaped injustice. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you have trusted in your own way and in the multitude of your warriors. Therefore the tumult of war shall arise among your people and all your fortresses shall be destroyed. At Shaman destroyed Beth Abel on the day of battle. Mothers were dashed in pieces with their children. Thus it shall be done to you, O Bethel, because of your great evil. At dawn the king of Israel shall be utterly cut off. And we see God's wrath and judgment on, on Israel for its idolatry. Interesting, one of the, the verses here in verse 8 is cited in the book of Revelation, which gives us a clue about the spiritual condition being addressed in the book of Revelation as well, that, that, the, that there's clearly a focus on Israel. And again, it's using the same language, describing rampant idolatry and the judgment of God. This is Micah chapter 5, and as with all of the prophets, and it doesn't matter, ma major or minor prophets, they, they speak of judgment, but then they speak of redemption. And here we're going to hear one of the most famous Christmas verses out of the chapter 5 of Micah. Let's have a look now. Now muster your troops, O daughter of troops. Siege is laid against you. With a rod they strike the judge of Israel on the cheek. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. When the Assyrian comes into our land and treads in our palaces, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princes of men. They shall shepherd the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod at its entrances, and he shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and treads within our border. Then... The remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many peoples like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass, which delay not for a man, nor wait for the children of man. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the nations in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among the flocks of sheep, which when it goes through treads down and tears in pieces, and there is none to deliver." Your hand shall be lifted up over your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And in that day, declares the Lord, I will cut off your horses from among you and will destroy your chariots. And I will cut off the cities of your land and throw down all your strongholds. And I will cut off sorceries from your hand, and you shall have no more tellers of fortunes. And I will cut off your carved images and your pillars from among you. And you shall bow down no more to the work of your hands, and I will root out your Asherah images from among you, and destroy your cities. And in anger and wrath I will execute vengeance on the nations that did not obey. So we remember that Micah is prophesying during the reign of Hezekiah. And we saw that Hezekiah was indeed surrounded by the Assyrian, as it seems to indicate here. And that God in himself raised up uh, a, a resistance to the Assyrians that dealt with their assault on in Israel. Remarkable prophecy. But just before that, and this is what the prophets often do, they, they speak of things as if they are about to happen when in fact they are a long way off, and then they will speak of things which were about to happen. And the long way off bit 
is the coming of Messiah, to be born in Bethlehem, to be the shepherd of Israel. And indeed, Christ is the great shepherd. This is now Micah chapter 6. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron and Miriam. O my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him and what happened from Shedem to Gilgal, that you know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings with a calf a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousand rams, with ten thousand of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The voice of the Lord cries to the city, and it is sound wisdom to fear your name. Hear of the rod and of him who appointed it. Can I forget any longer the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked and the scant measure that is accursed? Shall I acquit the man with wicked scales and with a bag of deceitful weights? Your rich men are full of violence. Your inhabitants speak lies and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore, I strike you with a grievous blow, making you desolate because of your sins. You shall eat but not be satisfied, and there shall be hunger within you. You shall put away, but not preserve, and what you preserve I will give to the sword. You shall sow, but not reap. You shall tread olives, but not anoint yourselves with oil. You shall tread grapes, but not drink wine, for you have kept the statutes of Omri and all the works of the house of Ahab, and you have walked in their counsels, that I may make you a desolation and your inhabitants a hissing. So you shall bear the scorn of my people. Chapter 7 Woe is me, for I have become as when the summer fruit has been gathered, as when the grapes have been gleaned. There is no cluster to eat, no first ripe fig that my soul desires. The godly has perished from the earth, and there is no one upright among mankind. They all lie in wait for blood, and each hunts the other with a net. Their hands are on what is evil to do it well, the prince and the judge ask for a bribe, and the great man utters the evil desire of his soul. Thus they weave it together. The best of them is like a briar, the most upright of them a thorn hedge. The day of your watchman, of your punishment, has come. Now their confusion is at hand. Put no trust in a neighbour and have no confidence in a friend. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your arms, for the son treats the father with contempt. The daughter rises up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my cause and executes judgment for me. He will bring me out to the light. I shall look upon his vindication. Then my enemy will see, and shame will cover her who said to me, Where is the Lord your God? My eyes will look upon her. Now she will be trampled down like the mire of the streets, a day for the building of your walls. In that day the boundary shall be far extended. In that day they will come to you from Assyria and the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt to the river, from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. But the earth will be desolate because of its inhabitants for the fruit of their deeds. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your inheritance, who dwell alone in a forest in the midst of a garden land. Let them graze at Bashan in Gilead, as in the days of old, as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt. I will show them marvellous things. The nations shall see and be ashamed of all their might, 
they shall lay their hands on their mouths, their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, like the crawling things of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their strongholds. They shall turn in dread to the Lord our God, and they shall be in fear of you. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance? He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You shall show faithfulness to Jacob and steadfast love to Abraham, as you swore to our fathers from the days of old. And there we have the hope of redemption. There it is where uh, Micah is, is noting that God is the God who pardons iniquity and he passes over transgression. And it's the hope of redemption that will ultimately be found in the coming of the Messiah, the one to be born in Bethlehem, the one who will have his face struck, it says, and he will be the Messiah who becomes the atoning sacrifice. Wow. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you that we can see your plan unfolding. And as our jigsaw box lid now begins to take shape and we begin to see the major prophets point to Christ, the minor prophets point to Christ. We see in the Gospels, it points to Christ. We see in the epistles, it points to Christ. Lord, the foreground of our picture now is becoming so much clearer. It was always about Christ. It was about Christ as the, the centerpiece of your glory, the centerpiece of redemption, the centerpiece of, of the very reason you created us, that we might come into a relationship with Christ. And Lord, I pray that today those who are participating in this Bible reading would begin to experience this joy. They would begin to experience the fruit, the peace and the love of being in a relationship with Christ. May they experience that fruit today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for coming on this journey. Please give this a thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. Got a question or a comment, leave it there in the comment section and I'll get to it when I can. And you'll see me tomorrow for our next Daily Bible Reading.